testicleness. It is still hot here, but I felt like doing something more than just power washing um, or something. Ooh. Oops, I forgot to mute my tab. Um, power washing or something, you know, mind numbing. I thought we'll do a good point and click. Um, stop telling me about the Apple TV thing. Go away, I don't want it. Um, so, what I decided was I would pick something off my random to-do list that I would enjoy, and that is obviously an Agatha Christie mystery, because I freaking love Agatha Christie, love mysteries, love point and clicks, and it's Byro, who is one of my faves. Um, so, we are playing the ABC Murders. This is a remaster of the 2016 game um which we also played but played long enough ago that i vaguely remember sort of the the the, the sort of the plot but i don't remember the details so we should be good because that was what eight years ago hey Licky. um this is a microids published game Developed by Artifact Studios and Sneaky Box Studios. Yeah, I've ticked the box that says don't show me it again and it continues to show me it. <laughs> so yeah, it is very annoying. Um, yeah, so Sneaky Box Studios, uh, Artifact Studios developed. Um, I think maybe one of them is like a porting thing. Who was the original? I don't know, neither of them seem to have been the original developers. Artifact Studio... Oh, no, Artifact Studio apparently was the original. Oh my god, I didn't go... Yes, Artifact Studio was the original, who developed the first one back in February 2016 with Tower 5, and now they've paired with Sneaky Box Studios this time um, to remaster the game. Published by Microids, came out on the 4th of July this year, 2024. It's an ID at Xbox game, as always, thank you to ID at Xbox for the code for streaming this. Um, really appreciate you keeping me in streaming games, because I uh, couldn't afford to otherwise. Ah, <laughs> uh, you have to dismiss it for every single channel? What the heck? That's horrible. That is really horrible. Um... That's bad. That's a, that is a dark UI pattern. A bad UI pattern. Um, bleh. But yes, they forced you to. I mean, you know, free song, yay, but choice. Would you like a free song? Yes, no. Consent is important, people. Consent is important. And if people revoke consent, it is important to respect that. Um, it's the whole cup of tea scenario, but, you know, on a different scale. So, your weapon is your knowledge. Your wits will be put to the ultimate test. Um, yeah. Uh, so, it is out on all of the platforms. Uh, Linux, PC, Mac, via Steam, I believe. Uh, the original was out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. S Nintendo Switch has a version. And then the remaster is specifically coded for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S, which is what we're playing on in Xbox Series X today. Um, so, there are 50 achievements. We got one um, because we did a beam dive. So we will be starting a fresh new save file. Um, not that we went very far. We basically skipped through the story bits and inspected Jap, um, who is the inspector. So that was quite funny um, as the beam dive. But we'll start a new game so that we can go through the story properly. Um, all of the achievements are obtainable, which is great. Price-wise, it's $19.99. Or twenty pounds twenty nine. Okay, it's apparently cheaper to buy it in the US than it is in the UK. <laughs> Normally, when it's 
you know, about 20 bucks, it's like 16.74, but no, it is more expensive in the UK. That is not fair. <laughs> That's not fair. You know, Agatha Christie, she's, she's, she's a classic. But anyway, this is ad adapted from the classic Agatha Christie novel of the same name, The ABC Murders. Um, I don't think I'd actually read that book um, before I played it last time. I still haven't read the book. Um, where is the game disappeared to? Oh, I've got so many games in my promo thing that I can't see them all. So we're just going to go alphabetically because it's under A. It's for Agatha Christie and for ABC. We'll switch to me so I can talk to you and then the stuff will come up. Apparently Frankenface added an option to hide the ad. Uh, excellent, there is one new setting. Uh, chat appearance community, hide the drop notification for getting Apple TV+. Plus. <laughs> Where's the tick box? No, normally I wouldn't add something that directly affects an advertisement like this, but Twitch broke the don't show again checkbox, so it's up to us to fix it. I love community, you know, sourced solutions. So, yeah, that is now enabled, so I shouldn't get that. Um, okay, All right. I'm here. I am sweating through everything, including the sofa. It's gross. So, let's get this hot laptop off me by finishing telling you about the game. The player embodies the famous Hercule Poirot. Hercule Poirot. The Belgian detective in a third-person perspective adventure game packed with mysteries. Once again, the private detective will find himself up against a mysterious opponent who goes by the name of ABC. Your intelligence will never have been so challenged. You'll have to explore many crime scenes in various cities set in beautiful surroundings across the United Kingdom. Leave no stone unturned when it comes to cross-examinations and daily deadly puzzles. Not daily puzzles. Observe, question, and explore everything possible in order to make the smartest deductions and understand the murderer's plans. So there's examination puzzles, brain deductions, the little timeline um, mechanic, and you've got the usual observations where, well, usually it's Sherlock that does the observations, but Poirot also does observations. Um, so the remastered version allows the option, offers the option to pay at 4K in 30 FPS or 1080p in 60 fps i'll have to look at those settings then i guess um so yeah here we go i think i told you everything i 100 percented the original um and i'm looking forward to playing through this it does require two playthroughs because you have to do a perfect playthrough and then a playthrough in which you may make um mistakes so yeah uh hi dan and milo yeah it came out in 2016 originally february 23rd 2016 um i played it in october no i played it july 2016 i believe it was a bean dive i think i did one looking at the achievements I did a playthrough in 2016 and I had one achievement left, just one, <laughs> which may or may not have been buggy that apparently I finished in October 2018. So God knows why there was that thing, that gap, but anyway. Um, there are currently four distinct um, Hercule Poirot, Agatha Christie um, games, all of which are published by Microids, Microids, don't know how you say that. Um, I've played them all, completed them all, I really like Agatha Christie, Hercule Poirot, but it's a point and click, so of course, you know, we're going to love this one. Um, eight to ten hours, so we'll try and do maybe one case today. Um, <laughs> your brain is now singing. Look at the Christie's of the tune of Eleanor Rigby. I mean, I'll allow it. It, it that not that I can think of what the tune to Eleanor Rigby is right now, but 
yeah, so I did a 1%. So we're just going to create a new prof profile. We're going to be Hercule Poirot because why not? Why wouldn't we be Hercule Poirot? There are 600 ego points to get. Um, language room subtitles. Volume. We've turned the music down slightly. The voice is up. Controls. Okay. Oh, and there's credits. We'll just do the beginning part of the credits because I don't think there's a way to s speed it up and this is, looks like it's going to be one of those quite long credit things. I kind of like it when you click on credits and it's just got boom credits. One page, no mirth, no fuss. Though I have to say I'm looking forward to Gory, Gory, Cuddly Carnage coming out. Um, it's a, I think it's a Wide Productions published game. I can't remember who the developers are right now um but i did play a little bit of it at the wasd conference last year uh and i'm gonna be in the credits because i i'm gonna be under the lifesaver section because i donate blood i used to before i got sick <laughs> now i can't donate blood because i've got so many medications my blood is probably not helpful um but so i was like that is so cool um and on Heck and Flop's stream yesterday, I was chatting and someone went, are you the Joe from the Lifesaver credits on Gory Gory? And I'm like, yes. And it was like the person that had put my name in the credits was there in Flop's stream. And I was like, day made. Um, <laughs> and considering I spent most of the day just, you know, perspiring, being too hot and fixing a bug in a thing and writing tests so it doesn't happen again. Um, you know so yeah i'm 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 hoping i get to, to stream that at some point because it would be nice to see myself in the credits um i mean i think i was in the credits for one of the kickstarter games you know under the kickstarter backers giant list thimbleweed park i think i was on that one and possibly calico cat cafe I think those ones I backed. It's really hard to say because I see a lot of games on Kickstarter and, um, well, I've been burnt in the past by a couple of ones that have not, you know, resolved. So I am very sparing when I back those. Um, but yeah. Ah, Tower 5 still get credit because they were involved in the original game, which is cool. Slowest credits ever. <laughs> so, yeah. But we do like Agatha Christie. Um, especially Poirot. And Miss Marple. I know they're very dated now. And some of them are not as PC potentially. You know. Including one of the book titles, which I believe had to be changed because it was exceedingly not PC. Um, but yeah, the Agatha Christie just herself was quite a mysterious woman. And has been featured in an episode of Doctor Who. Obviously not the actual person, an actor playing that person. The one with the giant wasps and has had books written about her specifically. One of which I read, which was nice. The woman on the train or something? It was about what happened after her husband cheated on her. You know. So, yeah. Excuse me. I am yawning. It is hot. I am perennially tired. Permanently tired. But it is also quite hot. I've got two fans blowing on me at full blast. It is 27 and a half in here. I've got the door open in the hope that the level of sun behind the clouds doesn't raise the temperature more than the chance to potentially move some of the hot air out and the cold air in. Uh, <laughs> or colder air. It's like 23 outside, I think. 24. But, you know, that's cooler than inside so yeah there we go thank you for playing we haven't actually played but um 
it's good to be able to pop up that um profile oh, right, right i'm on that profile bonuses yeah so basically the timeline um reconstructions achievements they have done some things where they display them in like a little box thing um there are ones for getting all the there are also ridiculously named ones um but there are ones for like getting all of the observations and i believe there are like hidden moustaches there's sometimes there's hidden moustaches um but i think this one just has you need to groom yourself um but anyway right let's 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 go oh i didn't see what that said collect ego points by something oh acting like prior row. Post getting shoved under the door. Interesting. Some post for you, Poirot. Mr. Hercule Poirot, you fancy yourself, don't you, at solving mysteries that are too difficult for our poor, thick head British police? Let us see, Mr. Clever Poirot, just how clever you can be. Perhaps you'll find this nut too hard to crack. Look out for Endover on the 21st of the month. Yours extra. Hey, B. C. Uh, it's some sort of joke. Maybe. But please remind me to inform Chief Inspector Jap. This is where I go. Oh, the I and the T and the W and the A. Typewriter defects, which used to be a really big thing for identifying suspects. Ooh. I remember one key element of the thing. It's, it's so fast now, you don't get a chance to read the little helpful hints on the loading screens because it doesn't take forever to load. We're playing old Sherlock games and literally spending like, you know, several minutes in the carriage with Sherlock in the loading screen. It's here, Poirot. The murder took place in this street. Grim place indeed. To the fair, Hastings. The streets of Andover are in a terrible state. How do you Look, know where Andover Chief Inspector is? Inspector Jap. He's talking with a policeman. Let us try not to get our shoes wet. Andover is in Hampshire. Um, because obviously Andover is all. I believe Andover is actually like a place, like like. I thought it was a it was a country. Maybe it's not. Maybe I've just been getting that mixed up all the time. Um, but yes, it's, it's it's a town in the Test Valley district of Hampshire. It sounds like it should be like you know, a place in Switzerland. Use the left stick to move Poirot. Use the right stick to inspect the sea. Um, and then when you find the element interaction, which will be interactable. <sighs> Like that. Okay. Don't dilly dally, Poirot. Jap will be waiting for us. Okay. So we can talk to them. This fruit and vegetable shop has a front row seat. Therefore, an employee might have noticed something. No, I don't think I did. It's like watching Ever After. Oh, it's a cat. Um, you know, it's like Andalusia. Oh, it's a fiction place, for really. No, I just, just. It sounds like somewhere foreign. Over here, it's Hastings and Poirot. You missed the nine o'clock train. We took the half past ten. Luckily, the service is good to Andover. So, Chief Inspector, what do we have? The victim is called Alice Asher. She owned this tobacco shop. She was killed yesterday with a blow to the back of the head. At what time? Let me just check. Uh, 
and Dora, possibly. That sounds more likely. <laughs> no, that's Angora. <laughs> I know that one. We're not going to do the word game. We're not. We're not going to do the word game. <laughs> um. Ah, we are doing observe. Observe. Three clues. Oh, really wish I could stop yawning. Is Jap being too relaxed? Let us find the clues that prove it. Okay. Slight smile. Hats tipped back proudly on the head. Relaxed attitude. Jab is in a good mood. Success. That was the achievement. I bet he thinks he's already called the culprit. Yeah, so that was the bleak bloop that I unlocked. Have made an observation. The last customer to see Mrs. Asher alive left her shop at half past five. The body was found at around 11 in the evening by an officer doing his rounds. The shop door was open. That's what alerted him. Had anything been taken? A little tobacco, maybe, but you'd hardly murder for a few smokes. There's nothing of any real value in the shop. I mean, if you don't you on one eye, you're a psychopath, right? In her fifties. Married, but separated. No children. A husband? Aha, uh -huh. Franz Asher, the husband. Alcoholic and violent. It's said that he regularly insulted his wife and threatened to kill her. A little too easy, don't you think? You like complications, don't you? Well, this time you may be disappointed. Peut-être. May I examine the crime scene? Of course, old chap. I'll be with you in a minute, Poirot. He's got spats. Ooh. Press the D-pad to open the investigation menu. Inspect the crime scene. Victim owns a tobacco shop, married to Franz Usher, held in the tobacco shop. Lequied. And they're with the little grey shells. <laughs> Sorry. Aim is to ask the questions he asks himself by establishing the links between the clues to deduce an answer. Okay. The body was found at eleven, no objects. Value for sale. We've not found all the information yet. Ugh. Okay, so. And let's go and have a look at the crime scene. Um, 50 achievements. Yeah. Ooh, big progress is saved automatically. The object from all it's not just it. any railway guide. It's an ABC. It's open at the letter A. There are no prints on the book. Red liquid is oozing out. Is it blood? Drop no. It's just some strawberries that are losing their juice. They probably come from the fruit and vegetable shop opposite. The counter is covered with fingerprints all on top of one another. Unfortunately, it will not be possible to use them. Ego points. There are cigarettes packets in a mess on the shelf. Objects hide secrets behind complex mechanisms. It's off to you to decipher them. Observe the 
Definitely was a relaxed stick. See so you in with LT. Oh, by pressing B. <laughs> the teal does not appear to have been touched. I have to check that nothing is missing from it. Something is preventing the drawer from opening. What year is it? Um, who are you? I don't know. I mean, I think... Ah, hello. Ah, a mechanism has just made a fan click. Oh, the Twitch app is just telling you now. 30 minutes into the stream. I uh, yes. We are good. It is just hot. So we are solving this The is full of money, but there is something strange. Something is hidden underneath. Something is hidden underneath. Something is hidden underneath. I mean, that is a long amount to... Something is hidden underneath. Okay. You can tell me something is hidden under it several times, but I would like you to move it. I am sleeping ridiculous amounts because it's hot. Um, maybe I need some tweezers and I don't have tweezers. No, okay, fine. Mm. Ah, hang on. It says eight. Something two. Okay, I find the missing thing. Eight something two. Eight five two. This must be the key to the back of the shop. Yeah. I sleep ridiculous amounts. I'm still tired. But I mean, if you slept, you probably needed it. That's usually what people say. I do not need the extra sleep. I am just getting it. I do not have a choice. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know. I'm going to go based on the amount of work, that, the amount of stuff that you do. Ooh, I got a bloop. Single gear. Solved a riddle. Oh, no. Fuck off. They're going from cheap viewers to best viewers now, so blocking a phrase doesn't help. Um, <laughs> and now it's on the scene. Please ignore the spam bot. Um, but yeah, you probably needed the sleep, right? I have the key. I mean, yes, but, you know, you're still only one person. <sighs> no matter, you know. Ah, yeah. Well, then you should only be doing 1.8 times the amount of stuff. She has a packet of play cigarette next to her hand. Did she drop it when she fell? She just has one wound on the back of the head. There are no other wounds or signs of a struggle. This poor woman's head is resting in a very even-shaped pool of blood. I can't see any other mark on the floor. Hmm. The body is hidden by the counter and is not visible from the tobacco shop store. Many customers must have thought that Mrs. Asher had popped out. New object key question was killed on sight. 
if we've got everything. Congratulations, you've won the achievement secret kit. Okay. We've got everything in here. Oh, hello. The place is unusually tidy for a crime scene. Hmm. Magazines and papers in order. No signs of a struggle. I mean, you know, we have, have just any started. Of a fight. Just started, so we are collecting information. So, Poirot, any news? So, an ABC guide with no fingerprints, but prints all over the counter. Normally, the tobacco shop does not sell ABC guides. Exact. Mon ami, could you have a word with the neighbors? Some may have seen something. Of course, my friend, yes, I'll do it straight away. differently. And he's Belgian. <laughs> but yes. Um, Poirot is a pair, but a Poirot is a leak, which always amused me. The door is locked. It's kind of like, you know, um, oops. Gosh darn it. I'm trying to figure out the inventory thing. There we go. Um, Belgian French is funny French. Mm -hmm. I guess. Um, I was saying something and I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> yeah, we've just started. So. Blood. I mean, when I first started on my medication... Did Alice Asher suffer from nosebleeds? I, um... Like, conked out at, like, nine o'clock at night and slept, like, a ridiculous amount of time. It was, like, ten hours or something. Um, it was very disconcerting off one tablet, so and that would be a side effect. German. Souvenir of our honeymoon in the Black Forest. To my Alice forever, Franz Asher. The ashes were a lovely couple when they were young. And, you know, it's hot, so I'm sleeping more, and I've been ill, so I'm sleeping more. So it's really hard to tell, you know, what is affecting what. what but, I mean, you know, box. waking up to Joe's dream, that's It looks that like you have to slide the slats of wood to open it. There is always a slidey wood pu puzzle. Always a slidey wood puzzle. in these games. This button appears to activate a mechanism. Like, literally that is the epitome of a Poirot game, is a slidey wood puzzle. The only thing they've done that is slightly annoying is um, made it so that instead of A to interact, you've got to do it with the left trigger. I don't remember that, and I keep on pressing A. <laughs> that should do it. Who is this young woman? To my dear Aunt Alice, married Howard. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nutmeg, I remember that. Have you found anything? The victim has a niece. We must find her. Been walking around in bare feet, um, 
randomly a spot on my foot hurts that always ends up hurting when I walk around in bare feet but it is much too hot to wear socks and then I was doing my diamond painting and I actually got a diamond stuck to my foot which is always funny um I've finished with this subject anyway something 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 it's good to see everybody hopefully everyone's okay this interior is very simple What is crockery? <laughs> Mrs. Asher lived very simply. I understand that. It's like in here, I'm young. You know, my body itself, however, has other quite other thingamajiggies. Oh, we got three eager points for checking our moustache. You're having a weird life crisis. Oh, I am sorry to hear that. Um, if you want to talk about it, this is a safe space. If you don't, that's fine. We can also, you know. Such a pretty decoration should be at the center of the motif to respect the symmetry. wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. The wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. I mean, you know, I don't understand weird societal expectations at all, I have to admit. wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. Get it to go down. That is really weird. 
The wooden flower is preventing the circle from turning. Yeah, it's like... Okay, fine. We're, we're, we're leaving it there. Great. Now I've got it stuck because I can't get... I can't get it to go down the bit I want it to do. Thank you for gifting a sub apex. My hands on it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Is it? Okay, Whew. okay, we've got it down onto there. Can we get it up? Alright, okay, we got it up onto there. Excellent. Um, but yes, thank you so much, Apex, um, and also hi. And yeah, I mean, you know, my brother is like married with kids, you know, but I don't feel like that's something, well, it's not something I want to do, but you know, it's, I'm making an absolute mess out of this, just, just so we're clear. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's not something that I am interested in doing. Um, but yeah, there's a weird, like, societal expectation that when you're an adult that, you know, you can't do fun anymore and, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, kids are great when you can give them back. Exactly. I love the my nibbling. flower is preventing the... Shush! The I love my nibbling. Shush! I'm trying to move the freaking flower. The wooden flower. I will hurt you, Poirot. Um. But yeah, there's like some sort of, you know, expectation that you, when you are uh, an adult, you know, that means you can't enjoy things anymore. And it's just weird. You know, you have to like boring stuff because you're an adult and adults can't like fun things. And it's like, why? Who made that arbitrary rule? And, you know, shut up because that's not true. definitely not doing this right i have to say it feels definitely like i am not doing this right mm. i mean indeed very much a silly sausage
Philly sausage is also a what? Aha! I hear the fence sound as if something was not. That took longer than it should. <laughs> Well, that's just weird. Hmm, it is blocked. I feel like it's got to be something to do with the bird things. So, hi, James. Aha, uh -huh, hang on. These drawings appear to be attached to the chest of drawers. They won't move. <laughs> no, we don't know asking for people's passwords. That would be rude. Personal pin number. No, not personal pin number. So many things wrong with that sentence. Oh, it is like that. Okay. Hmm. It is blocked. Right, okay. So we're looking at these and I'm just... These drawings appear to be... Trying to orient them the same way. There we go. Five ego points. Excellent. From Mr. Adam Flint, Royal Bank, Eastfield Road, Andover, to Mrs. Alice Asher, Five Bishops Road, Andover. Dear Mrs. Asher, further to your request of 12 February 1935, I have informed my superiors of your wish to apply for a loan to acquire the lease of the shop you rent from Mr. Fairfax. Despite the seriousness of your case, I regret to inform you that your request has been denied. The amount of your personal contribution, £11, is not high enough and represents too small a part of the final transaction. I remain at your disposal for any questions. Adam Flint. Mrs. Asher's meager savings were not enough for her to own the tobacco shop, but will largely cover her funeral costs. Hmm. 
about kiddocks. So got a bottle of something. medicine. Lord Nim. Your coughs. Medicine. Laudanum-based cough medicine, Mrs. Hasher, and Dr. Molly Laboratory, slightly. London. It's strange to find such an elaborate medicine from a leading London laboratory in the home of such a modest woman. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Left is not the motive for the crime. The motive is definitely not financial gain. There is no sign of a struggle, and the till has not been forced or emptied. I think I've looked everywhere here. Let us see if I can find any more information in the shop's surroundings. Why is the niece a suspect? We got a blooped. Delayed blooped. Neuron have answered a question from the little grey cells. Mrs. Asher was killed here. The absence of marks in the shop and the regular shape points. of the blood stains indicated beyond a doubt. It's a signature. Murderer deliberately left behind this ABC as a signature. The absence of fingerprints and the fact that it is open at letter A for Endover leaves little doubt. Okay, I think I have everything. We looked in the little mirror. We observed our moustache. the same way as her Kuparo. Four mm, pence a letters, a lovely lot of letters, four pence only. Convenient. A bottle of poor quality vinegar. The smell could awaken the dead. This woman appears to be a smoker. Well deduced. <laughs> She's a big smoker. She must have been a customer at the tobacco uh, yes. shop. Yes. Alice Asher from Andover. Yeah, it's the ABC murders. But if you know the who the murderer is, then don't spoil it. Did you know Alice Asher well? And for starters, who are you? I'm Hercule Poirot, the detective. You're foreign, that's for sure, with your accent and your odd way about you. And you're here about Alice's murder, I suppose. Well, I've nothing to say to you. Did you speak to the victim yesterday? No, I never saw her. 
Please try and help me, madame. Why should I help you? For your beautiful moustache? Heh. <laughs> Come on, move along now. You're scaring away my customers. Please, do not be ridiculous. I know that you went to the tobacco shop yesterday. Well? It is your duty to tell me if you saw something unusual. Who do you think you are telling me what to do? Get away from my stall! Getting very far with that. Oh, rustic confessional. And it'll bloop at some point. There we go. Bloop. Strawberries, six pence a pound. We completed the hey, Morrow. Mission, at least. Is the greengrocer causing trouble? I'll sort her out. No, please leave her, Chief Inspector. I'll get her to talk later. I found the victim's niece. She's waiting for you in the back of the shop. Thank you, Monami. I'll question her. Yeah, I mean, you know. They remastered it. They probably didn't redo the voices necessarily. <laughs> Jap had the body removed out of respect for the victim's niece. His attention is commendable. I mean, she was either there or the victim visited her because there were strawberries. Is her grief sincere? She appears to be very upset. She's dressed in mourning. She looks for Jai. So remember to do all the observations before you do the talking. You are very fond of your aunt, am I right? She was the only family I had since my mother died. If you are her only relative, you will be the only one who inherits. Oh, yeah. Sir, my aunt was poor. And in any case, I'm not interested in any legacy. <laughs> my apologies. I see that you mean what you say. <laughs> Was your aunt afraid of her husband? He shouted a lot, but she wasn't afraid of him. Why, he used to slink away when she turned on him. He was afraid of her, if you like. Did your aunt enjoy good airs? She had a bad throat, but she was well cared for by a doctor in London. Does Franz Asher work? All he's done for years is drink and gamble, but he used to be a very good cabinet maker. What does he live on? My aunt used to give him five shillings a week. Why did she support such a goods for nothing? He was a husband. She couldn't leave him with nothing. I understand. You have been of great assistance, mademoiselle. Please take this young lady home. My pleasure. Well, this Franz Asher does not seem to be quite so dangerous as Jap says. And since Alice Asher gave him money regularly, it was not in his interest to kill her. Okay, right. So, time range. That one was easy. We're still missing a bit of information, though.
the murderer probably pretended to be a customer. He hit the shopkeeper from behind as she turned around to serve him. Transaction. Okay. But yeah. Oh, God. I'm guessing we that's have him. to wait for him to sleep it off. He's all yours, Poro. There are a few things I need to check. That must be some way of sobering him up. I wonder what his wife used to do. He must have scared the customers away. Vinegar. It is Saturday. I had to check my phone because, you yeah, know, a bottle of poor quality vinegar. The Come up, wake him up. Maybe we need to talk to him first. He's not in any condition to be questioned. A bottle of pork. to say I was gonna ask can I borrow the vinegar oh look at what friends dropped oh okay I missed that but yeah it's the weekend it's hot doesn't seem to be abating, I'll be honest, which is annoying. Um, but, you know. It's Ali Sasha's notebook. Ah, that's interesting. It probably contains information about our possible debtors and creditors. But we can have some fun with some games. Oddly, the fruit seller has debts too. She will probably be more cooperative thanks to this piece of information. Mary Drower was telling the truth. Mrs. Asher regularly gave money to her alcoholic husband. Hmm. A box of new stockings. Your fruit is rotten. What? A foreigner dares to say that? According to the victim's account book, you owed her ten pounds for tobacco and magazines. That's a lie. She owed me one pound. I swear. Now, please be so kind as to explain this. Look at my account book. Alice owed me eleven pounds for fruit and vegetables. I may have had a slate at her shop, but she had one at mine. She owed me one pound, and that reminds me I have to get it back from her niece. That is quite enough. Your account book has saved you, but I might ask Chief Inspector Jap to throw you in the cells for one or two nights while he checks your entries. Do you want to go to prison? Prison? Now that's not fair. I haven't done nothing. In that case, I am counting on your full collaboration. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Listen. I didn't kill Alice, I swear. But it's true that I did go to the shop. Everyone up to this weekend. At what time? Six o'clock. She left me a note saying she wanted some strawberries if I got some. I received them late, about six. So I took them over to her. 
But you did not see her. She wasn't in the shop, so I just put the strawberries on the counter and left. Did you see anything unusual in the shop? No. Well, maybe one thing. There was a railway guide on the counter. Alice didn't sell them. Maybe it's the customer who left it there. You were not alarmed? I thought Alice had just gone to get her medicine from her room and that she'd be straight back. You mentioned medicine. Something for her cough. She used to take it a lot. Who do you think killed her? France. Her scoundrel of her husband. He was always after her for something. Well, he's a foreigner. Uh, sorry, sir. What I mean is he's German. That's even worse. Did you see Franz Asher enter the tobacco shop late yesterday afternoon? Well, no. But at that time of the day, the streets are packed, and I have better things to do than watch her shop. The bin in the background with the flies just seems unnecessary. <laughs> I'll just borrow your bottle a moment. Take it. It's what Alice used to sober up her husband. But try not to empty the bottle. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Right, well, we now know that she was killed between... Five thirty and 6. No active questions. Oh, what we do have. The priority is to question. Mes amis, I can say without a doubt that poor Mrs. Asher was killed between half past five and six. Killed when the street was packed with people. That's rather bold. I've been talking to the neighbors and... No one's seen anything? Or rather it's anything and everything. Am I wrong? <sighs> no. Bien. We must grill this villain Asher before he falls asleep again. Man is in rather a bad state. This man has been fighting and he smells of alcohol. Still got bruised knuckles, but said three. What were you doing yesterday at the time of the crime? Can't recall. Come on, my friend. Try to remember. It is important. I'm really sorry, sir. But I don't remember a thing. I see. But maybe you do remember threatening to kill your wife? So what? You shouldn't take things so seriously, sir. Nothing but empty threats. We didn't get on all that badly. Are you often involved in fights? I don't know what you mean. Asha, look me in the eye and tell me that you were in a fight. I'm looking. I'm looking. No, I wasn't in a fight. You are right. Looking at the state of you, you did not defend yourself. So someone gave you a good beating. A beating? No way. All right, he tore my coat and gave me a black eye. 
You see the state of him. Very interesting. Who is the other that you struck? Probably best if I tell you everything. Yesterday afternoon, I met Roderick Tanner. We'd bet on a dog fight together. An illegal bet, naturally. Yes, sir. Our dog won. Roderick got the money, but he refused to give me my share. And you thought about it. What time was this? In the evening, about six, I think. We were on the other side of town. You see, I couldn't have killed my wife. Asher's alibi appears to be confirmed. All the same, I'm going to call and check that he did have a fight with this Tanner on the afternoon of the murder. You can never trust this sort of chap. One thing is certain, Asher was a ruffian who used to beat his wife. But he's not very educated. It certainly was not him who wrote the letter signed ABC. Let's resume, Hastings. We know the murderer pretended to be a customer. He did not kill her for money, that appears to be certain. I agree with you on that point. And the murderer left an ABC guide as a signature. Therefore, it's likely he wrote the letter. Indeed, but that doesn't explain why and how he did it. You are quite right. Why he did it is a mystery. But as for how he did it, we do know enough to try and reconstruct the events. Okay. Reconstruction time! The killer enters the shop. Mrs. Asher turns around to greet her customer. The murderer asks her for some tobacco. She turns her back to him. He seizes the opportunity to strike her. He then places the ABC upside down before leaving. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Construction success. Asher has a strong alibi and we don't have any other suspect. But what was the point of this crime? She had no debts. She gave Franz Asher money regularly. She wasn't owed money. Nobody stood to gain anything. No doubt about it. The murderer is insane. Hmm. And I fear that we had not heard the last of him. I hope you're wrong for once. Yeah. Let's go back to London. If we hurry, we should catch the two past seven train. Are you coming? No, unfortunately, I have to talk with Andover police. See you soon, then. Are you coming, Hastings? Let's go home. There's nothing for us here. Well, do you have any idea about the killer's identity? Hmm. The crime was committed by a man of medium height, with red hair and suspicious eyes. He has a slight limp on the right foot, and a wart just below his shoulder blade. Poirot! Mon ami, what do you want? You fix upon me a look of dog-like devotion and demand of me a pronouncement a la Sherlock Holmes. Now for the truth. I do not know what the murderer looks like, nor where he lives, nor how to set hands upon him. What shall we do, then? Nothing. Nothing? Do not be so impatient, Hastings. The killer will manifest himself soon enough. I thought I heard the postman. Maybe there's some news. I would go and see. Okay. We're still in chapter one. Daily Flicker, June the 22nd, 1935. Battle over control of bank system. What will the government do for money? Andover, murder of a tobacconist.
It is not the right time. Newspaper. I've read any newspaper. Endover, Hampshire, population 31,200 inhabitants. No doubt about it, Hastings is going bored. Dear Mr. Poirot, well, what do you think? I believe that I won this round. The end of our affair went like clockwork, don't you feel? But the fun has only just started. I would like to draw your attention to Bexilon Sea on the 25th of this month. We're having a crazy time. Best wishes, ABC. The next crime will be in Bexhill. We must warn Jap to Scotland Yard. Did the letter indicate anything that might help the police? To be honest, I think we can already guess something about the next victim. But I need to think about it a little more. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters may have similar defects. Yes, this eye is weird. Hmm, the W is not printed properly. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, this eye is weird. Yes, the eye characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Both letters were written on the same typewriter and show the same characteristics. You surprise me, Poirot. You usually ignore material proof. But there is nothing usual about this case, Hastings. Nothing must be overlooked. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. No, so, Poirot, have luckily you found it's something? easy brain cell work. Oui, I believe so. But I am afraid it is not enough to stop the murderer. Let us go and see Chief Inspector Chap. I will explain there. Ah, some cool air. 
Yep, gotta turn the fan on because, you know, very important. Ooh, chair. <sighs> Made yourself at home. I got an achievement for sitting down. No doubt about it. It may be time to go. To Scotland Yard, please. I was watching Pyro with Daisy and Luke when I went to see them. Like all hunters. Hastings has always been fascinated by weapons. Jap has invested a great deal in his career. Chap is an investigator greatly respected by his peers. This game rewards you for looking at everything. Um, so... I do. London. I really like this city. One thing is certain, you never get bored here. Alice Asher was murdered in Endover, the ABC killer's first murder. Jap appears to be snowed under. Chap appears to already be overloaded with work. My news is not going to improve matters. Bonjour, Chief Inspector. I am afraid we have some bad news. I have just received another letter signed ABC. The next crime will be on the 25th in Bexilon Sea. Are you completely sure it's from the same person? Yes. I have compared the two letters. There is no doubt about it. I suppose you think he's going to carry out his threats. I fear so. Good God, Poirot. Bexhill is very busy at this time of year, and we have no idea who the next victim will be. We have some idea. I suspect that the name of the second victim will start with B. What on earth makes you think such a thing? I thought about it when I saw the name Asher clearly written over the shop door of the unfortunate woman who was murdered in Andover last month. When I received the letter mentioning Bexhill, I deduced that the victim, like the town, might have been chosen by alphabetical order. So, it's an alphabet fiend. I'm going to have a list drawn up of all the people whose name starts with B. I hope there aren't too many of them. I mean, it was yeah, Alice Asher, you so it work, might Chief be Inspector. BB. You have a few days to Bertie prepare Big yourself. Nose, Brian Thank you for coming, my friends. 
<laughs> Sounds like a rolled doll character. Chief Inspector oh. Jab, your call does not bode well. Indeed, we have just found the body of a young woman on the beach in Bexhill. An ABC was placed on the body. We'll be there as soon as possible. It was a lady. Bexhill is a delightful town. It would be nice to come back and visit. I do not entirely agree. Walking at the beach damages my shoes, and it hurts my knee. <laughs> so the years have not spared you, my friend. It's the same for all of us. That is exactly what I said to myself when I saw you back from your travels. Poirot! Do not be offended, Hastings. I can see Jap waiting for us. And from his face, I would say that things are not looking good. Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. I have told Jap about the, the the achievements are extremely delayed. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture. Although, personally, I prefer more modern buildings. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For a woman, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. No, no, the body hasn't been moved. Saying. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing? Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine. Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. Okay. We're now in Chapter 2. Okay, we're just going to take a small break and have a stretch and get a snack because um, it's about halfway through the stream. So everyone else should also take the chance to have a break, get a snack, self-care, etc. Hydrate, very important if it's hot where you are. And I'll be back in a few minutes. I'm just going to run an ad. I am Mac. You have chocolate chip shortbread and fruity booze. I mean, that sounds cool. I have a slightly crunchy snack, so I'm going to mute while I'm crunching um, and examining the crime scene. can't see the red. That means I'm muted. So if I do start talking, then please do <laughs> remind me.
Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder, but a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. This hut is locked. This hut is locked. This hut is locked. The padlock is locked. This hut is locked. So from the different words, I'm guessing that that one which says nine, why does it go five, nine, seven, eight, nine again? Anyway, this one said padlock, so that one's going to be what we need a key for. But yeah, it looks like someone's been playing with the numbers. There is no doubt about it. Bexhill has one of the most beautiful beaches in the area. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. These marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. The poor child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that.
The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motive for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have a address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture, although personally I prefer more modern buildings.
Could it be the same buildings as on the victim's photo? This is definitely where the photo I found in the hut was taken. Hi, Hibble! We've been being quiet. He's all being worried. Us. Oops, I'm walking into poles. With all these tourists. These shops must be thriving. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder, but a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. you in a minute, gentlemen. This is a well-laid table. Nothing is out of place and, above all, no creases. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. Something tells me that she's the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? This page won't help me. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Betty wasn't serving on her own at these two times. 
Let's keep searching. Most probably a family. This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover. Maybe the murderer? Betty served a family and a man on his own. A whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer? This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found dead on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. Ah. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee, her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Do you think there may have been some problems between them? I'm not on those sort of terms with my staff. Now, please excuse me, I have work to do. The customer who ordered a whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Stings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. I've finished with this subject. How are you doing, Havor? What you been up to? How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. 
She wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair the very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor Mummy. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They are all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one-off, without a doubt. Family photos and fires. Hastings always pays more attention when young women are being questioned. Make him sound so pervy. Yes, we have to admire ourselves in every single mirror. Because we get ego points for it. So. We figured out who done it yet? What is she feeling at the moment? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Your sister had a fiancé, I believe? Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Do you know where we might find him? He works at the estate agent's Court and Brunskill. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the Chief Inspector finds him. How is your shortbread going, Dan? I have some shortbread. It does not have chocolate chips in there. Which I am now sad about. It looks like Betty was also a music lover, the same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing.
something on this clock bothers me. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. This metal disc is stuck. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. Hmm, could the screw be slightly loose? This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This decoration appears to be firmly fast. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be firmly fast. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. Cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. This decoration appears. This wooden panel is blocked. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This decoration appears to... This wooden panel is blocked. Definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. This metal disc is... This wooden panel is blocked. I can't... This decoration appears... This wooden panel is blocked. This decoration appears to be... This wooden panel is blocked. This decoration appears... Do we need to... Ah, no, okay. Oh, I said no! Ugh, never mind. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. But 
she liked luxury and going out. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? I have not finished inspecting. The yes and no one that was annoying. Something on this. So what we did this wooden we panel is blocked. I can't open it. Strange. This wooden panel is blocked. What a strange mechanism. Before that had the um, things panels opening. I was just randomly clicking on stuff and it worked. Cogs are blocked by. Still don't have the um, thing to turn it with anyway. Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Didn't realize you could interact with that top bit. Look, a key. This could be useful. This code probably has something to do with the mechanism above the clock. This metal disc is stuck. Three, two, two, one. That's right, isn't it?
Ah, three, two, one, two. Something clicked on the front of the clock. Hmm. I seem to remember there was something for setting this to 12, but I don't know whether it's because the achievements are really delayed or... Because I did it wrong. Can't do it if I um right, let's try again. We have to do it something on this clock bothers me. Clock. There, that's better. There we go. There we go. As I was like, I remember that from when I did it um last time just randomly about setting it to twelve. Good. It should be possible to open the... Look! A key! This could be useful. What a strange mechanism. I don't see... Missing things when you're trying to be ah, fastidious on, this. on the front. And it's one of those things like when you finish the puzzle, you can't go back in and change it. This could be useful. Betty. I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon, D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again, Adrian. Yep. Oh, hello. Missed one. Hmm. A box of new stockings. We've seen that before, haven't we? Ah. 
I have not finished inspecting Betty's bedroom. We? Oh. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Maybe the back of the buttons? Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company. My dearest Betty. Mm -hmm. A record sleeve with a handwritten title. Huh? We did that one Betty must have recorded the demo. Ah, something on the bedside table, maybe. This small key should be useful to me. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with our voice? Right, now we have a new objective. We should be able to exit. Got the wrong. Really annoying with the whole A. Is not actually. Let us see. What is this cupboard hiding? Yep. This looks like sulfage. This looks like sulfage. I cannot open it. It looks like the mechanism is blocking it. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. I cannot open it. First of all, I have to take the ender. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. Can't do music maths without. So, I want two of them. Okay. There is bound to be a clue. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. That doesn't work. Looks like something goes in. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten. That doesn't work.
I cannot open it. What I want to do is like... Lift this thing up and put the record on, but it's just not letting me do it because I don't remember, know how to do stuff. Yeah, I probably should stretch. I'd like to at least get this part of the chapter solved. down there. Just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. There we go, that's what I wanted to do. I don't know how gramophones worked because I never used them. What, there wasn't something that was a thing when I was growing up. I mean, you know, they existed, but... Oh, Donald! We're in the middle of recording. Sorry, Betty, but it's not wise. The doctor said you should rest your voice. You're such a killjoy sometimes. Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her throat? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course, she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. I've finished with this subject. It looks like this woman is single, but she has feelings for someone. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she is studying in this manner? They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? He's a bright man, with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Donald appeared to be very much in love with your sister. Yes, he was mad about her. Mad, you say? Being madly in love can often be destructive, and Mr. Fraser was known for being jealous, I believe. No more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. I am not your enemy, Mademoiselle Bernard. And you are not my friend either, Mr. Poirot, sir. Yes, but your lies are not helping Mr. Fraser. 
or you for that matter. This case is much more complex than you think. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper, he completely lost control. He could be so violent. Betty was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago. But they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying one day, one day. Well? He'd commit murder. So you were afraid that he would become our main suspect. I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Exactly. Had you not told me about the case, I would never have dared to tell you about this little matter. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Okay. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Like got some My little gray cells to answer to first. Pants. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Talk to him first. Question Donald Brazar. Don't know whether we'll get to finish chapter two, but 
Was... You seem Fraser, Hastings. What is your feeling? There was He's a big sex. chap. Fragile isn't exactly the word that Just springs to mind. So minutes. I talked to his landlady before seeing him. She went to bed at 11. Fraser wasn't home yet. Yeah. Megan Barnard said he is a reserved character, but with a nasty temper. We will see if this is the case. What a pity. Mm. How do you do, Mr. Fraser? You heard your poirot? Mr. Hastings said you wanted to speak to me. Yes. I know that it may not be at the right time, but I would like to ask you a few questions. This man looks suspicious. Fraser is in a terrible state, as if he hadn't slept all night, and he's drinking white horse. Leave me alone. Tell me that it's a mistake, that Betty isn't dead. Sadly, your lady friend has been murdered, Mr. Fraser. Oh, Betty, if only you'd listened. Did you visit Betty yesterday afternoon? No, I haven't seen Betty for two days. I was at the office yesterday afternoon. Can you prove that? Of course. But why this question? Betty died yesterday evening, didn't she? Yesterday, a guest came to the Ginger Cat alone and ordered a white horse whiskey, and by the look of it, you also appear to be fond of this brand. Yes, it's a good whiskey and not cheap. I only drink it on special occasions. Or tragic ones. I understand. Do you know what Betty's plans were yesterday evening? She said she was having dinner with her sister. And you believed her? And why not, sir? She was my fiancée. That did not stop her from lying to you before. Betty was not a bad girl. But she did like to take advantage of a success with men. How dare you sully her memory! Please excuse me if I appear to be brutal. I understand that this is a difficult time for you. So you understand why I don't feel like talking, Mr. Poirot? Ah, I knew I'd find you here, Poirot. I thought the victim's young man was here. Yes, he's all yours, Chief Inspector. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Roman... Romanic.
synapse. Answered after questions from the little gray selves. So we're about halfway These through. things look silly teas. Fraser doesn't have an alibi and he's extremely jealous. You are very skilled at summing up. And yet you haven't asked Jap to arrest him. It is too soon. But I agree, without the letters announcing the crimes, Fraser would already be behind bars. Bon, I think we have enough elements. Let's reconstruct the events at the scene of the crime. I can't imagine how the murderer wasn't seen, though. Surely she must have struggled. Let us try and imagine the scene. The killer and the victim are walking on the beach. Miss Betty has a bag, a belt around her waist, and carries her shoes in her hand. Both of them walk slowly to aunt number five. Both of them walk slowly to hut number six. Miss Betty enters the hut. She leaves without her belongings. Then she hides a coat. They keep walking. Then she removes a belt. The murderer moves behind her and then attacks her by surprise. The body falls, lifeless, on the sand. Everything appears to match the crime scene, mon cher Hastings. That is exactly what happened. Without the ABC, we might have suspected Mr. Asher and Mr. Fraser. But by signing his crimes, the murderer is making sure he's accused. In a way, it is very generous of him. <laughs> generous? The murderer seduced Betty in order to lure her to the beach and kill her. Indeed, the young woman was certainly careless, but not stupid enough to follow a stranger. What are you planning to do, Poirot? Return to London, mon cher Hastings. Go back to Atlanta. So we should just about finish chapter two. Right, back to London. There is nothing more for us to do here. I believe it split three Jack murders and then to reveal details suspects, to the press. So like four chapters. The alphabet murder is now famous. It is not a bad idea. The more people who know, the greater our chances of finding out something of interest. Poirot, I have a bad feeling. Poor Mr. Poirot, not so good at these little criminal matters as you thought yourself, are you? Rather past your prime, perhaps. Let us see if you can do any better this time. This time, it's an easy one. Churston on the 30th. Do try and do something about it. It's a bit dull having it all my own way, you know. Good hunting. Ever yours, ABC. Good hunting. Did you hear that, Poirot? The murderer seems to be taking it all as a game, a challenge. He will strike on 30th in Churston. We must warn Scotland Yard. No time to lose. We must prepare our suitcases for Churston. 
Mon Dieu, it is already ten o'clock. I will call Scotland Yard immediately. Excellency, Sussex, population 24,703. Hastings' photo album is very proud of his bag. July 30, 1935. ABC affair. No progress. The alphabet murderer is still on the run. Ever since the police found the connection between the Bexhill and Endover affairs, the inquiry has barely progressed. In this issue, we are publishing provocative letters sent by the killer to Hercule Poirot. Unfortunately, they have not yet helped to find him. Daily Flicker. July the 26, 1935. The Bexhill Horror. Young maid strangled on the beach. Killer struck at midnight. Okay, let's do that. Ah, oh, damn. I that Hello, chat. what I wanted to do. We received a new letter from ABC in the 10 o'clock post. Where and when? In Cheston. Today. Today? I'll inform the population immediately. I'll check the train times. Call me back. <sighs> it is not a good time. We didn't muck up that. Hastings, what you are doing is an absolute disaster. That is no way to pack suitcases. Heavens, we must hurry. We have to get to Churston before the murder. Hastings, order and method are always necessary, regardless of the circumstances. Okay, okay. I'll let you pack them. All the same, it really is a disgrace to leave your belongings in such a mess. Voila! It only took a minute. Yes, but immediately Quarren, as you close that... You were right! I've just consulted the ABC guide. There's no hurry. The next train doesn't leave till 11.45. You see, there is no need to hurry. We will not be in Cherston until tomorrow morning. After the murder. But why has the murderer warned us so late? It's not what he usually does. Did he do it on purpose? Very good question, Hastings. We should also compare the letter we have just received with the other two. Although I have very little doubt about what we will find. It's enough look. Tied it up to twice. <laughs> Miss Haste, Hastings tore the envelope. I lock my revolver in this drawer. I've not used it in a very long time.
Ah, some cool hair. We gotta do that because it's hot hair. <sighs> right, let us compare this new letter with the second one. Let us examine this more closely. Certain characters in the two letters. Let us examine the characters in this word. Yes, the A appears to be quite unusual. That's right. The A characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my th Hmm, the W is not printed properly. No. Ah. This I was trying to click on that one. Of course, the W characters in the two letters do indeed have the same defects. I have to find some other similar defects to confirm my theory. Yes, this I is weird. Yes, the I characters in the two letters do Very hard to click on a single letter. Defects. And they were all single letters. My theory was right. These two letters were written with the same typewriter. Let us now try and get our brand cells to work. The letter should have arrived in time. The postmark shows that it was sent three days ago. However, our man made a mistake in the address, which explains the delay. All the same, the post office took their time correcting the error. Come on, Poirot. Your address is not quite as well known as that of Scotland Yard. Poirot, the telephone. It must be Jap. Hastings, it would appear that you are getting slightly thin on top. Really? I hadn't noticed. I have some news from Churchton. Bad news, I'm afraid. Sir Carmichael Clark was murdered while out on his evening walk. Sir Carmichael Clark. The name is familiar to me. He was a famous throat specialist, one of the best in London. A wealthy man. He retired to Combeside, a beautiful house by the sea. He collected antiques. Are you going there? Yes, let's meet on the train. And that's the end of the chapter and the end of the stream. Let's see we'll let it load. I remember did this. The victim series. is called Sir Carmichael Clark, one of the best throat specialists in London. The body was still warm when we found it. If we had been warned earlier, we definitely could have saved him. It appears that the murderer made a mistake when he wrote his letter. A mistake? Lucky for him. And what if he did it on purpose? No, no. He's defined his madcap rules and he's sticking to them. It's a matter of pride for him. Shall we go up to the house, Poirot? You go, my friends. I will come soon. Get up. So, just new victim. Chapter three. We also got the have prepared to leave for Cherston achievement. We'll see how many points we have. 183 out of 600. Ooh. <laughs> have we missed some? Probably. Quick look what we've got in the... Bonus. No, I, I'm fairly certain I said bonuses. 
um, the uh, selection in this one is not as um, mm, videos interesting maybe some of those are if you get it wrong and achievements Don't know what the donkeys are. That's probably mistakes, actually. There are a lot of different moustaches and dragon stuff. Anyway, that is Agatha Christie's The ABC Murders, the Xbox series. X, the next, so the, the current gen upgrade remaster, whatever. Anyway, it's an excuse for me to play it again. Um, so we've done about half the game. We got <coughs> 16, well, I say we've done about half the game. We've done two of the Moiders. I believe there is, the, there's this one more Moider, and then we get to confront. Um, but it may be a slightly longer second half, I don't know. We've got 16 of the achievements. Uh, we've done a pretty good playthrough. Thank you again to ID at Xbox for that one. I am going to go and grab some food and be streaming, maybe, or maybe just watch the TV and eat some food. Um, I might finish off this today. We're not going to finish it off on stream, I don't think. I'll think about it. I'll think about it whether we finish it off on stream. But. Yeah, usually we do like a, a double, triple Joe case today, but I didn't have the energy to prepare for more than one game. So we might do that tomorrow. Um, but for now, we've, 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 we've um, finished. We, we, yeah, something, something. Yeah, so games. Thanks for being here. Thank you to Apex for doing the gifted um sub to james hopefully um you'll have had fun today had a little bit of distraction some little you know chill murder mystery point and click um you know it's a little bit cooler in here does it, it feels cooler it's not cooler but it feels cooler so yeah hopefully you had a chill time i'll be back tomorrow same time, same place. Or same back time, same back channel. As I don't know, I probably shouldn't say that. <laughs> but anyway, keep cool, self care, and I'll catch you later. I've been Joe, otherwise known as Angel SK, and thanks for watching. Bye.